pray that we are open to what you have for us to learn. I pray that we lay our burdens at the cross, that um, we look to you, Lord. I pray that we look to you tonight and every day of our lives. Um, so I just thank you for who you are. And may you bless tonight. In your name, amen. having me tonight and uh, for this cool time of worship so just take this time to enter in just leave behind anything that's um, distracting you right now and just make this your one-on-one time with who Jesus Open the eyes of 
to worship you, God, and to be in your presence, God. We're so lucky to be in your presence, God, that you gave your only son for us, God. And we remember that this past weekend, God, um, for Easter, God, and um, we're here to serve you and to fellowship with one another and go out and um, make disciples of all nations, God. And I pray that you be in us tonight and you... um, Keep us from any distractions, um, and we just love you so much. Amen. Hello. Hello, everyone. How's it going? Week four. All right. Welcome. Yeah. Thank you. The beginning of the end. Yeah. Um, hello. <laughs> I'm Walt. I'm Lexi. And we are crew, and we are a group of students who love people, love Jesus, and want to give everyone a chance to know him. Oh, Jesus. All right, um, so on to our announcement. First one is Bible study. Yeah, Um, I know we say it every week, but we really desire to get you plugged in. So if you are not in a Bible study, if you are checking out crew for the first time tonight, we would love to get you plugged in. So there are times up on the board here, um, but if you are curious which one to go to or what not, um, come talk to, talk to Walter I or um, anyone on staff or environment team even. So, cool. Yes, and next we have prayer and share. <laughs> so, as you may or may not know, prayer and share happens every Tuesday during U Hour. Uh, meet at the stables, it's a good way to reach our campus and um, bring more people in to get to know each other and to get to know Jesus in the process too. Yeah. Another awesome opportunity that we have is Turn to Workshop. So the first Tuesday of every month um, at the Stables um, Outreach Team wants to help you and help equip you with tools and different things to help you um, evangelize to either your friends, your coworkers, different people on campus. So if you're new and don't know how to use it or would like to grow in different ways, um, come out to their workshop the first Tuesday of every month. Uh, next is social media. Um, if you're not following us on anything, go ahead and add us right now. Um, Facebook is where we put all the things, and Instagram and Snapchat is where we put some of the other things. And 
Yeah, go follow us if you don't already. Yes, social media, Cal Poly crew everywhere. Women with me! Woo! Wow, look at those lovely ladies. All right, so this um, April 28th through the 30th, um, we have our women's retreat. Um, it's a great way to just fellowship with our fellow ladies um, to grow deeper into a relationship with Christ and a relationship with each other. Um, it's a really sweet time, and we would highly recommend you come out. Um, there is a Facebook event, so if you have not seen it, um, go find it on our crew page. So, yeah. Which is a good segue into Men's Retreat. Yeah. Men's Retreat is happening the same weekend as Women's Retreat, April 28th through the 30th. Um, it's happening. It's going to be great. It's a good way to get to know um, your fellow brothers in Christ, get to know each other better. Um, yes. And next slide, I guess. Woo! Crap! Yeah! Right. Uh, mark your calendars. May 13th is prom. So be ready to have a great time. Um, I'm sure there will be more to come as far as what the theme is and whatnot. But yeah, it's a great time to just have fun with each other in growing community. So May 13th, be there. Awesome. Next, you have plates for eight. <laughs> Who likes food? <laughs> Who likes it when people make food for you? <laughs> then you should come to plates for eight. It's um, the last one of the year. Um, it's a uh, really cool event to get to know people you wouldn't have otherwise um, or get to know, just like get to know more people in this movement, eat together, break bread together, um, play some games, eat some food, fun times. And um, oh, if you are interested in hosting, um, there's going to be a Google Doc at some point according to the slide. I don't know when that will go up, but it will. So sign up on that whenever it does if you're interested. Cool. Lastly, we have Frisbee! Woo! Every Friday, so tomorrow at 3 p.m., um, is Ultimate Frisbee out on the lawn by Denny's. It's a great time to just end your week. Um, yeah, so come on out. We'd love to see you. It's super fun. Um, we would like to bring up Zach. Yay! Alright, thanks guys. Okay. Um, so, um, as you guys know, I'm, my name is Zach and I'm part of the core team. And, I'm top right team here. and uh, I was, uh, well, we have a, a mission you know, that we um, have to do more evangelism. And, uh, um, so the past few weeks, we've um, given you guys challenges, right? So Max gave you the challenge to make friends in your classroom. And then last week, uh, I think it was Adriana, right? She um, made the challenge to actually go talk to them and have a spiritual conversation. Um, so now I was going to invite Jocelyn up because she actually has a story for us. Okay. <laughs> Hello. Um, if you don't know me, my name is Jocelyn. Uh, I'm a third year graphic design major. Yay, graphic design! No one else. Did. Oh, except for Devin. Yay! Um, um, so I just wanted to share really quickly um, really cool things that God has done. And um, if you follow me on any type of social media, on Instagram, on Snapchat, it's basically like all my coworkers. I feel like I just put like filters on their faces all the time. Um, and I just like love them so, so, so much. And um, I started working, if you don't know, I work for ASI, uh, I'm a graphic designer for ASI. And um, I walked into the workplace last year, about a year and a half ago. A year and a half ago, wow. Um, and um, at the time, uh, if you know Tyler Stewart, uh, he was working there. And also Josh Phillips also was working there. And as I, entered into that workplace, learned um, the heart that they had for their coworkers, that they had already been investing in them for a year, a year and a half uh, before. And through that, got to see, all right, like they love these people. There's a reason why. 
Um, and from there, after now that Tyler and Josh have both graduated, been able to continue uh, investing in my coworkers. And this past maybe two weeks ago, uh, we went on a, a field trip to LACMA for one of my classes because that's what graphic design majors do. We go to we miss class and then we go to LACMA for the day because it's great. Um, and my coworker Adrian and I decided to carpool, and we're stuck in LA traffic for the next like two hours. Um, and we're just talking. We talked about his relationship, we talked about my relationship, we talked about uh, school, we talked about design, and then we kind of have this little segue. And I feel this like pulling from the Lord of just like ask this question and um, just asking him like, growing up in a Catholic home, what does it look like for you uh, in your perception of Jesus? And from there, like, the Lord just segue this huge hour and a half long conversation about we covered sex, we covered sin, we covered dating non-believers, we covered predestination, suffering, race versus faith, and um, in there just got to present the entire gospel to him, which is so cool. And what, what I really want to tell you guys is just to walk boldly where God is already moving, um, and also to not manufacture a heart for people if you haven't given your own heart to Jesus. This is really dangerous. Um, and you can say, like, yeah, go and talk to your coworkers, talk to your classmates, all that stuff, love them, and all that stuff. Um, but if it doesn't come out of a genuine love for Jesus, man, you know, like, when you love the Lord, and from that comes an overabundance of, like, man, I love Adrian so much. On campus, Abby and Susan got to meet him right before it. Um, like earlier today and like I love him so much as a brother and from that love I'm like dude I need him to know Jesus because he is trapped in so much he's without so much so much hope and I want him to know that and so yeah walk boldly where God is already working um, don't disregard what he's already doing don't uh, disqualify yourself because I'm a hot mess right now um, and he decides to use us most, I feel, during that time because it gives all the glory to him anyways. Um, so yeah, that's about it. Really cool. That is awesome. Okay, bye. Praise God, right? That's awesome. Oh man, I love that. Alright, so I guess I'll remind you guys about like our mission statement for this. Um, we want to see the love of Christ um, overflow out of our students. And this week, um, we'd love to see the love of Christ um, overflow in a restful time. So what, what we're proposing is we take a half day of the day. Um, I'm going to be doing this too. Uh, I'm applying for Sunday afternoon, so after church. But um, pretty much what it is is just rest in God. That doesn't mean, like, you know, like, chill in bed. Don't even get out of bed and, like, watch Netflix all day. Like, that's not that. That's not rest. Rest is, you know, really just um, giving your life to God and just giving Him that time. Just to, to take a step back, not worry about the, the worries of this world, and to worry about, um, to just look forward, look forward to what we have, what we have in Christ, you know? Um, so I want to encourage you guys to take that. Um, I really like this. this is, rest is not inactivity. It's being free from the burden of the flesh and pursuing that. Um, so that's what I want to encourage you guys to do for this week, okay? All right, sounds good. Thank you, Zach. And Zach. Okay, Zach. So now it's time to introduce our speaker. Y'all not ready for this. Um, he's got that James Dean daydream look in his eyes. Mm. Uh, long hair, slick back, white t-shirt. He will never go out of style. Please welcome up Michael Webb. <laughs> The reincarnated James Dean. More, more, more ethnic. Shorter. Just as cool, right? Okay, yeah, there's no reincarnation in Orthodox Christianity. I understand because it it's a joke, Caleb. <laughs> Boom, roasted. Oh, man, how we doing? Guys, it's like, what, week four? End of week four? And five, six more weeks and we're done. We're done. How many seniors we got in the house? 
Yes, we're all going to walk, guys. We're going to have fun. Any class majors? Your class. Yeah. Okay, cool. Well, I spent enough time to graduate two and a half times. So for those that don't know, I've been here at Cal Poly for 10 years. I'm still a student, but I'm on staff now with crew. Um, hopefully, I'm going to be joining staff full-time next year because I love ministry, and I love you guys, and I love what we do. Um, and today, we're going to be talking about walking in the light. And it kind of came from a time of rest I had several weeks ago. Um, but before we get into it, let's pray. Let's bring the Lord into it and come in humility. So, Lord, thank you. Thank you for our time together. Lord, thank you for these students, these men and women who uh, just have committed themselves to community, to learning about you, to healing, to faith, to thankfulness, to relationship with you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you've filled us time and time again with your love, your confidence, your boldness, your power. Help us believe in the fact that you are not only with us, but you're for us that you want us to grow, that you want to know us, you want us to feel known by you. So help us be humble, to recognize who you are. You are God. You are the biggest, best, widest, tallest, deepest God there is. We can't understand you. You're so infinitely amazing and astounding. You're a good, good Father. Amen. Okay. Those that have their Bibles, 1 John uh, 1, 5 through 11. I'm, start. I'm just going to read it. Unless we, you know what, let's try doing something old school. Let's all stand up and read it together. Can we do that? All right, let's all stand up. Let's read God's Word. Okay, let's start. This is the message we have heard from Him and declared to you. God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with him and yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not live out the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. If we claim we have not sinned, we make him out to be a liar and his word is not in us. Thank you, God. First John 1, 5 through 10. All right, amen. We did that. Okay. So, themes. Guys, what pops out at you? This is okay, popcorn, anyone. What pops out at you? Bold letters, okay. All right, yeah, 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 smart guy. What else? Jesus. What about Jesus? Light. Robert, what do you got? Faithful. What else do we see? Okay, walk in the light. It's a command. Okay, what else? Okay, yeah, fellowship with God, fellowship with each other. I think those are good. Um, so uh, I'll tell you why I wanted to come to this scripture. Uh, I was doing a thing on rest. In fact, since you guys are like, we're going to do a half day of rest, it's perfect. Okay, so my Bible study, uh, we decided to go through a book that's all about rest and talking about like silence with God, right? So I was committing myself to three 30-minute times in the week where it wasn't just prayer or reading my Bible. It was just silence, listening, right? Sitting and listening. And I was on those benches uh, where everyone goes to prayer and share. The first people you see, like when you walk out, there's like the wooded area with all the benches, right? And I was just sitting there watching the wind go through the trees in front of me. It was beautiful. Um, and I was just trying to get my mind to be quiet, right? Just white noise of, of school and money, and parents, and just television shows, and podcasts that are in my head, and just everything jumbling, and I was just trying to find quiet with God. Um, so I closed my eyes, and I was just, I was even imagining white noise, because it was louder than everything else, 
and uh, I was just asking God, I want to hear you, I just want to listen to you. Help me feel um, like, like I can listen to you. That I have this, this is, I just want to hear you, right? Um, and it was a cloudy day, slightly overcast, partly cloudy. Um, I know that I sound like a uh, news man, um, but it, like the clouds would pass over me, behind me, because the sun was in the back behind me, because it was like five in the afternoon. And when the, the, the clouds passed, just the heat of the sun on my back started making me sweat almost immediately. It was just like hot. But at the same time, there was warmth, and then colors started popping, and it was just vibrant, and it was just like all this cool stuff, and then the clouds would pass again, and all the shadows uh, disappeared, and the warmth kind of went away, and the wind made me a little cold, and uh, I was just recognizing these cycles where the sun was covered, and I was cold, and I couldn't really tell, like, everything was one color, it almost felt like, right? Um, if you guys know anything about light diffusion, basically when the light goes through the clouds, the sun goes through the clouds, it scatters a million different directions. So it's not one direct light source, right? Right now you have two lamps, three lamps pointed straight at my face, right? But there are shadows, you just can't see them because there's different directions. But if there was one light, you would see, if I'm standing here, shadow over here, only light over here, right? It'd be really dramatic, look really scary. If I stood over here, same thing, real scary. On this side. This side's beautiful. James Dean. So I just started realizing these cycles of when, when the sun, the power of this burning ball of mass in space, um, that takes eight minutes for light to even travel to us, right? That just a simple cloud, nothing crazy. Everything looks flat. All the colors kind of blend together. The shadows disappear. The drama goes away. But when the sun is in full view, you just see every shadow. You see where the light falls, right? You see um, what is lit and what is dark. And I was like, that's really cool. I really liked that. I felt encouraged. A week later, I spent another time of 30 minutes, and I had a different understanding. I was sitting down, and I was looking at the shadow, and the clouds were going past again. But I started to realize when the clouds are passing over, I was trying to guess, where does the shadow fall? Just guessing where God might be, or the sun, right, the metaphor, the sun, where it might be. And if the clouds were to part, where would the shadows fall? Just trying to guess with my mind. And then the cloud would pass. And then I noticed I was like 15 feet off. Like the shadow was way off in my mind. And just thinking like, for me in my life, how often is it when I'm feeling blind or I'm feeling disconnected from God that the things I do... Sometimes I'm just walking blindly. I don't know if I'm doing bad or good sometimes. I don't know where my heart is. What's the condition of my heart in that day just because I'm feeling disconnected? And that's when I started to think about confession. Right? Um, for you guys, what is the word confession? What does that make you feel? Yeah. Shame. Okay. Anyone else? Vulnerable? Yeah. A couple more. Robert. Revealing? I suppose. Humble? Okay. Does anyone feel like there's good connotations to confession? Because, <laughs> like, right now it's real... I have a say it's a sucky, you know? Okay, Jocelyn. Freedom. Okay. Grace? Peace, Alfonso. Honest. All right, there we go. It's even. Balance. Ooh. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us all our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. If we confess our sins, he is faithful. God is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Um... I, when you said shame, shame and guilt, um, it goes perfectly with the psalm I want to read, okay? This idea that when we have unconfessed sins, like, what does that feel like for us, right? Not even unconfessed, just muckiness, right? Just ugh, brokenness, disconnection. Um, psalm 32, blessed is the one whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. 
Blessed is the one whose sin in the Lord, the sin the Lord does not count against them, and in whose spirit is no deceit. When I kept silent, my bones wasted away. Though through my groaning all day long, for day and night your hand was heavy on me, my strength was sapped as in the heat of summer. Then I acknowledged my sin to you, and did not cover up my iniquity, and so I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the guilt of my sin. So this posture that David has, basically, it's something we're very familiar with. Like we just, when we have unconfessed sin, when even, okay, when you're a little kid, right, and your parents say you don't want to do anything, you shouldn't do this thing, and you do it, they don't know, and they don't really ever, ever find out, but you just feel this ah, turning in your gut, right? You just don't tell them, you just hold it in, you hold it back. That unconfessed thing, the thing that keeps you from having that intimacy with your parents, that, that's how God sometimes feels with us, or we feel with him when we sin, and don't want to even tell him. That when I kept silent, my bones wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy on me, my strength was sapped as in the heat of summer. This feeling of shame and heaviness and weight is always coming when like, we feel there's sin. Why? Why do we feel that inside ourselves? What inside of ourselves is condemning us, or holding us back. I think uh, I was reading, it's like we have little lawyers in our head that try to defend us in court every second of the day, right? And these lawyers are trying to give us freedom, but they really don't have any power because the one who made the law is the judge, right? So you wake up, you sin, and you feel this pit in your stomach. You feel apathy or constant search for coping. You're doing other things to cope. But instinctively, we want to find some sort of justice for the sin because um, it requires a payment, right? It requires a punishment. Like, that's just something in our nature we understand. But who does the payment or the punishment go to? It's not my fault. It's them, right? Your little lawyer inside your brain is like, no, no, no. The blame is someone else. It's not your fault. Or some people, the blame is you. You're the worst. You should hide, right? But... You're going to exact justice in place of someone else judging you. I'm going to judge myself. I'm going to abstain from being in the courtroom at all. There's also this idea of justification. Well, it's okay for me, not for you. There's nuance. You don't understand. There's like little things. I can't help myself. It's a part of who I am. It's my personality. These are lies, right? But we do it to ourselves all the time. I see it all the time with myself sometimes. When sin isn't confessed, or we're judging it for ourselves, or defending it for ourselves, we feel disconnected from God because we're just defending. We're constantly defending ourselves. God says, no, don't do that. I'm the judge, but Jesus is going to pay your price. Jesus takes your sin. He takes your shame. So what do we do? Um, I think on the last slide, if we can go to that one, I have three points. Um, first off is evaluating ourselves honestly. Right? So there's a sense of humility where we have to stop and say, where am I at? What am I feeling? Do I feel defensive? Do I feel like everyone's out to get me? Do I feel that no one's listening to me, that I need help? What are the feelings I have? Sometimes it we don't want to be honest with ourselves. We just do all this other stuff to not think about it. But we have to take the time, especially as Christians, if we've asked Jesus to be a part of our life. He's asking you, just sit and sit with me. Sit with me. Think about where you're at. Why do you feel that way? Why do you have a pit in your stomach? Why do you, just, why do you feel apathy? Where's the root of that apathy coming from? I just don't care anymore. I don't feel like I want to be involved because it's so much work. Why is all my time going to, to literally playing video games on Netflix? Why am I just feeding, coping? Why am I doing that? What is the root? Where does that come from? Is it me because I'm hiding? Is it because I'm scared? Is it because... 
I, I just don't know. Why? It's okay to not to know. But we have to ask ourselves why. Why do I beat myself up? Why do I think that I'm, I'm the issue, I'm the problem? That when I have a problem with someone else, that maybe the problem is 60-40, but I put 100% of the blame on myself and condemn myself and hide from relationship and avoid fellowship. Why? Why do, you, why, why do I do that? Where's the root in it? What does Jesus have to say about it? At the end, uh, in Psalm 32, it says, Then I acknowledged my sin to you and did not cover up my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the guilt of my sin. I didn't cover up my iniquity, right? So I acknowledged to God what I did, but I'm not going to cover up my iniquity, the bad thing. I'm not going to cover it up. I'm just going to walk completely open to God. And I'm just going to trust that He needs to hear this. Right? And God forgives the guilt of our sin. And He doesn't just take away the guilt, He takes away the shame, right? That, oh, feeling inside. Shame. I feel shame a ton. In fact, that's my number one feeling. Guilt, almost never feel as guilty as I do shameful. Right? Not that I did something bad, but that I am bad. Right? That feeling that's just like your identity, who you are, is bad. That's what shame tries to say to us. But what God says is, no, I made a new thing in you. You are a new creation, right? Shame doesn't live in you anymore. Shame is put on the cross with Jesus. He died a shameful death in your place. You forgave the guilt of my sin and you took the shame. The darkness and light. Let's go to those two pictures again. Uh, I don't know if I showed them. Can we go to the first one, uh, Jessica? Here's the next slide. It's okay. Anyways, I want to talk about the clouds and light. Right? That if we light of the sun, God looks at us. Right? If he sees us, if we allow ourselves to confess and be seen by God, uh, what we basically do is we see exactly what is dark and what's light. We see what parts of us are hidden and what parts of us are exposed. You look around, you turn around, hey, there's my shadow, there's a shadow over there, there's a shadow over there. I know where to walk, so I'm not in the shadow, in the darkness, right? If I walk where the light is, then I feel safe. There's no question. But when we have unconfessed sin, it kind of clouds what is and what isn't in our life. What is and what isn't disconnecting from us. My father, um, I was very angry at my father for a long time. Um, my dad left my mom my junior year of college. Uh, he woke up, he basically said, I don't love you anymore, and peace out. And he's very angry. Because just a lot of the things that happened, my dad, in this effort to find his own freedom and self-identity and wanting to be uh, autonomous, he broke my family apart. Just broke it. Tragic. My mom uh, went into a suicidal depression for months. It was really hard. My sister basically had crisis of identity for years. Um, for me, I joined crew. And I, I found a lot of life in it, but for me, I ended up coping. I still didn't even get a lot of healing for many years. In fact, right now, I'm talking about healing that's starting to happen a few weeks ago. Okay? Um, but I started to cope with evangelism. That was how I started to cope. I was like, well, if I can't get better... I'm going to help anyone, everyone else because I don't believe that I can be better. I don't feel like I can be healed. So I just started bringing everyone else the gospel except myself. Uh, so I do that all the time, all the time. Almost to a point where I think I got annoying. But, you know, that's okay. I think the Holy Spirit knows that. Um, but um, I don't think I talked to my dad uh, more than once a year. Um, and there was a gap of three years where I didn't talk to him. Um, just some of the things he said, the trauma, the unforgiveness, I, I couldn't hold it anymore. My anger towards him was too much. But I recognized that I had that. A couple of years in, I started just crying for no reason. I had all these panic attacks. And uh, I ended up going to counseling. And they were teaching me that I needed to forgive. Like I just needed to take a step without him. Without him. I had to confess not only my sin, but what the sin was, what he did. And I started to look at it for truth, and I started to see that my dad is a broken man. There's not much that separates me from my father except for the fact that he was really weak and he was scared and he ran. 
and that it was really hard for my dad. I know that. But he also sinned against me. And he hurt. I live with that pain every day, you know. I live with my sister now. I see the remnants of it. She's saved. My mom's saved now. But uh, it still lingers, right? The healing is just a long process. So for me, there's just always anger. I always knew I had anger in my heart for years and years. And every time I see the anger, I say, hey, God, I hate this part inside of myself. This is, this is bad. Like this, this hate is hurting me. Hurting me. I need you to look at it. Do you see it, Father? Do you see this? I don't want to hold on to it anymore. I want my dad to confess and be true. I want him to know you. God, would you please know my father? Right? That as I started to confess my anger towards him, my dad, I wanted my dad to have that intimacy with my, with my God. I started to realize that he needs God just as much as I need him right now. And, and honestly, every conversation with my dad, I, I would start to present him with a lot of love, but also I wouldn't back down from, this is what was true. It's taken many years. My dad actually just started going to counseling like a year ago. And I talked to him for the first time like two weeks ago. And there's many times I wrote him letters. This is what you did. I, went, no, I, I, just, I need apology. I need this. I need that. But this is the first time he sat down with me and he listened to me completely and actually asked for forgiveness. He confessed to me that those are things he did. Um, it's really hard when your dad cries in front of you, um, especially when you recognize, like, he's just like me. But that confession. The acceptance of knowing that my dad is like me made me see that he's, he's in the body of Christ with me and he recognizes that he needs God too. The confession wasn't just for me, but I, it was for his healing too. Right? James 5, it says, I Confess your sins uh, to one another so that you may be healed. The prayers of a righteous man have power, I think. I think that's what it is. And this idea of confessing our sins... I even confessed to my dad saying where I was holding anger. And it was freeing. I walked away and I was heavy and I was like, oh, that's a lot off my back. But it was definitely freeing to know, hey God, I'm seen. The truth is exposed. Um, so what do we do once we've confessed? What does it look like? We have to confess continually, right? I confess my anger to God over and over and over and over again. I told people over and over, said my story over and over and over. But the point is, like, God's a patient God. He's got a timeline. And I was just waiting for him to find a place where he would be able to heal my father, to bring him closer. When we confess, we walk in the light. I can see my dad for what he is. Not an evil, angry person who broke my family and I'm angry at he is a man who broke my family, who I feel angrier at, but I also love him. I know he loves me, but sin has broken us. Right? I see it the way God sees it. Above just the hurt, above morality, from a place where he wants them to all be reconciled to him. So, I don't know. All that said, the little lawyers in our head, the clouds and the sun and the shadows and the light, the most important thing is that there's freedom in Christ. There's freedom in confession. That when we confess our sins to God, when we confess Him to Him, He sees you. There's intimacy in confession. There's healing in confession because you're numb. Sometimes you confess and you're like, I don't feel anything. But in obedience over time, that's just maturity. You will be numb. When we confess to each other, we grow in a relationship, we're numb. That's what I want for you guys. we got six weeks left in this quarter. We have 26,000 students at Cal Poly Community. We're all in or outside different churches and communities, clubs, classes, families. But in all of it, God is very present. He's very present with you. He's present with me. So in our next six weeks, how can we bring this idea of, I have intimacy with God, I want that intimacy for others. I want to bring them into reconciliation with God. What can you guys do to love on our team?
to love each other and to love yourself. To ask God, how do I receive that love you have for me? Okay. Guys, let's pray. That was a lot. I love you. Okay? How are you feeling? Real quick, before, how are you guys feeling? Do you guys have hope? Do you guys feel hope? I really want you to have hope. Okay? Hope is the thing. We have intimacy with Christ. Is that exciting? He knows you. Joel, he knows you. I've seen your face a lot of times. Just keep looking at it. You're a beautiful man. He loves you. He loves you. He loves me. He loves this movement. He loves every single student on our campus. So we can walk in freedom, knowing God knows so much about me that I don't have anything holding me back, and I want to walk in the light and bring others with me. Because people who don't see it, they need it. They need that love. Father, thank you for today. Thank you for our time together. You are a good Father. You see us. If there are things in our heart right now that are just turning in us, well, we need to let you know, Father, we want to confess. Would you put a, a heart, a spirit of confession in the people in this room so that they know you fully, that they've given everything of themselves to you? Because, Lord, I know that you are good and you are trustworthy. You are worthy of all the glory. Lord, you know us intimately. You know it's very close to me. Search my, Lord, search my heart. Know me, Father. See where there is frustration, there's iniquity, there's bad things, there's sin. You see it, Lord. Let us let it go and give it to you. And lead us to you ever. Amen. The prayer team is going to be in the back. If you guys need to process anything or you need prayer, um, if you guys would stand for worship. Thou my vision, O Lord of my heart, not be all else to me, save that Thou art. Oh, 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 oh. 
God, I just thank you so much for this night together, and we just come and pray, we can talk about confession, and we can just feel your hope in this room. Thank you for this group of students, these driven people that are, are working towards being functional people in society, and at the same time loving you and being that light. So um, just fill us up with diligence and, and love and compassion for others, and um, yeah, just thank you that we can come here and charge up to the week. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.